Hi guys, today we're going to read An Otis Christmas by Lauren Long. It was winter time on the farm where the friendly little tractor named Otis lived. Snow covered the hills, church bells rang through the cold wintry valley, and Christmas was almost here. Christmas was a festive time on the farm. The farmer strung lights, hung wreaths, and trimmed the annual Christmas tree. Otis loved Christmas, but this one was even more special. One of the horses was expecting a baby fall. Otis could hardly wait to welcome it into their farm family. He would teach the new arrival about life on the farm, and he was excited to have a new friend to play with. Puff, puff, putterty, chuff. On Christmas Eve, the farmer came into the barn and fed the animals their traditional Christmas meal of hot bran mash with chopped apples and brown sugar. Otis delighted in watching them dig around in the trough. He knew how much they loved their special treat. While the animals were eating, the farmer opened the toolbox and brought out a package wrapped with a bow. He opened the package, pulled out a shiny horn, and said, Merry Christmas, Otis! He bolted the horn onto the hymn saying, A special tractor needs a special horn. The farmer wished them all a Merry Christmas and he headed back to the farmhouse. He said, Sleep tight all. A big snow is headed our way. Otis was so happy he didn't know what to do. He had never, ever received a Christmas gift before. And he had always wanted a horn like the truck had. As Otis settled into the stall for a good night's sleep, the snow started falling and he thought this was for sure going to be the best Christmas ever. Put, puff, putter, But suddenly, Otis woke up to the sound of troubled voices. It was the farmer in the horse's stall. The horse was pacing back and forth, breathing heavily and swinging her head up and down. Something was wrong. She stopped, pawed at the ground, and dropped to the floor, rolled over onto her back and then to her side. Something was very wrong. Then Otis heard the farmer say something that sent chills through his frame. We need Doc Baker out here tonight or we'll lose them both. The farmer sent one of his helpers to get Doc Baker. As the barn door opened, they saw nothing but white. They were amazed at how much snow had fallen. The truck lunged forward, fishtailed this way and that, and promptly slid down the hill, plunging into a snowdrift. Otis watched as the farmhand spun the tires deeper and deeper into the snow. The truck was clearly going nowhere. But what about Doc? And what about the sick horse? Otis heard the farmer's words again in his head. We need Doc Baker out here tonight or we'll lose them both. Otis knew where Doc lived. He'd been there once delivering some supplies with the farmer, and he knew a shortcut through the woods. With the snow up to his chin, Otis headed out into the cold night to get Doc. Otis plowed through the white woods, put, puff, putterty, chuff, over a frozen river, across a deep meadow, and up a snowy hill to the top of a steep cliff. And that's when Otis realized he was lost. He had climbed the wrong hill. Everything looked different covered in snow. There was no time to turn back. Otis aimed his headlights over the cliff, saw where he needed to be, and bravely headed down a dangerous path. The way down was slippery and treacherous. It took all of Otis's courages to keep going. Yet before he knew it, he had reached the bottom and he could see the edge of the hollow where Doc Baker lived. All was quiet that Christmas Eve as Otis plowed up to Doc's house. He flashed his headlights and gunned his engine, but no matter how hard he tried, no one in the house stirred. How could Otis wake up Doc? Oh, of course, his shiny new Christmas horn. As loud as Otis could muster, he blared his horn. Beep, beep, honk, honk, put, put, putterty. Beep, beep, honk. A light came on and Doc Baker threw open the window. Otis revved up, chuffed, and spun in a circle. It looks like Otis the tractor, Doc said. There must be trouble on the farm. In the twinkle of an eye, Doc dashed out the front door, jumped on Otis, and held on for dear life. Otis sped up through the hollow road and followed his tracks up and over the steep cliff. 
down the snowy hill, back across the deep meadow, over the frozen river, and back through the white woods. The cold wind whipped their faces as Otis and Doc sped through the deep snow back at the farm. At the barn, the farmers and his helper did their best to comfort the horse, who was laying still, hardly breathing. With no way of getting Doc Baker in the blizzard, there was little hope. A hush came over the barn as the farmer prayed for a miracle. All was quiet until... Puff, beep, beep, honk, honk. The farm hands threw open the door. It's Otis, and he has Doc with him. They ran out into the snow to help Doc Baker into the barn. The doors closed, and immediately Doc got to work. Otis stayed outside, desperately waiting to see if Doc Baker could save the little horse and the little fowl. Time passed slowly as Otis chuffed back and forth. It had been a long night, and he was exhausted, yet... He would not rest. He was too worried for his friend the horse. Finally, Otis stopped in his track and looked around at the farm. All was silent and covered in a blanket of peaceful snow. Daylight was near. Christmas Day would be soon upon them. Suddenly, the barn doors opened and a warm glow poured outside. Otis heard the farmer say, Well, would you look at that? When Otis puffed in, the animal stepped aside. There, in the middle of the barn, stood a beautiful baby foal, his spindly legs straining to keep him upright. Then Otis saw what the farmer was talking about. The little foal had a marking the shape of a star on his forehead. That Christmas day, after the roads were cleared, people from all around the valley came to the barn to get a glimpse of the baby foal. Otis beamed with pride as he realized that this certainly was the best Christmas ever. And as much as he loved his new shiny horn, Otis knew that he had more important gifts than Christmas. He had his farm family and his friends and the newborn foal, and they were the greatest gifts of all. The end. This story had a strong central message. What was it? See you guys later.